In this tutorial I'm going to look at just simple linear regression. I'm back with the real estate data again and we're going to look to see if there's a relationship between selling price and land area. If we go to stat regression we can see that there's an option here for a fitted line plot. Now this is basically the same as a scatter plot except Minitab will fit a regression line over the top and tell you um, what the R squared is for that. So if we put selling price against land area and the types of regression models it will draw is linear, quadratic and cubic. We're just going to stick with a straight line. Quadratic basically means a simple curve and a cubic is a slightly more wiggly curve. Okay. So here with the line plot we've got this is the line of best fit using least squares. This is our regression equation here. Selling price is equal to $136,000 plus 45 times the land area. Uh, the R squared here gives us a measure of how much variation in the data we're explaining and that's 14.3%. So that's not a lot and we can see that from the graph. There is a slight trend upwards for more expensive prices um, with the larger land areas but there's a lot of variation here that doesn't seem to have anything to do with land area at all. So we can do a regression on this just to see if this is actually if this slope here is significantly different from zero or if we would if it would be just as good to draw a line horizontally across and say it doesn't matter what land area is your selling price is equally likely to lie between yay and nay. Okay so I'll close that off so we'll go to stat regression and regression. Our response is selling price and we're trying to predict it using the land area. If we go to graphs we're going to check the standardized residuals and we're going to look for a four in one residual plot. Okay so we'll come back to the residuals in a minute and what we'll look at first here is the output from the regression. So here we've got our regression equation again, selling price is equal to 136 blah 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 thousand dollars plus 45 times land area. We have a t-test here for both the constant and the land area for both parts of this equation to the straight line to see if they're significantly different from zero. So the null hypothesis, hypothesis for each of these is that the coefficient equals zero. The p-value here is really, really low, so the chances of observing the data if the constant was in fact zero is very small, so we assume the constant is not zero. And we also find that the chances of observing the data if the slope of the relationship between land area and selling price was zero is also very small, so the slope is probably not zero. So this means we have a significant relationship between land area and selling price, but it's not explaining all of the variation in the data. It's only explaining 14% of the variation in the data. So there may be other variables which will explain more of the variation or it could be that the rest of the variation really is just random and there's no pattern to it. Or the relationship between land area and selling price is not a straight line. It's something more complicated. So there's a few reasons there why the R squared could be low even though the variable is significant. If we look at the residual plot and now, now we need to remember what the assumptions of regression were. Um, we have an assumption of constant variance. Now the residuals are the bits left over. So for each data point we'd say that selling price is equal to this equation based on the land area. But actually when we looked at the... Um, I need that scatter plot back up. And if that was exactly true, then all of these points would lie on the straight line. Now the difference between the actual point, say for this one here, and the fitted point which would lie on the line, that difference there is called the residual or the error. These are all the bits the model is not explaining. And what we are interested in is if there is any pattern to all these errors that the model is not explaining, because that might mean there is something else going on. Now, if we look at the residuals versus the observation order, there's no increasing variance, so there's no problem um, over time. And this is a not a time series data set. This was a snapshot of selling prices. This is not over a year. If these were data prices, um, prices of houses taken over a number of years, then we might see, say, increasing variance over time where the prices became more variable. 
here we have the residual values versus the fitted values. So this means the error versus where it fit on the line. And it looks like we, this pattern we can see here is the same as this pattern we can see in this graph here. It looks like there's a little bit of a curve there. Is this curve significant? Well, we could run another regression model to find out. These are just a few data points and the bulk of the data is here. And because we have these ones spreading the data out, it's actually difficult to see what's going on in this patch here. But it's possible there's a bit of a curved relationship here. We expect that the residuals are normal, normally distributed. Oh, I didn't know it did that. It'll pop you off all the residuals. Uh, we expect that the normals are resi the residuals are normally distributed about zero. These two plots you can read together. So here is the zero, and we expect that the errors are some are less than zero and some are more than zero, and we get that here. But it's a little bit skewed to the right. We've got a few more of the higher observations. And in this line here, if it was a normal distribution, then we would all these points would lie on a straight line. There's a bit of a wiggle here, and there's a bit of a wiggle here, and these two points are way off, and that's probably our very expensive houses. So there's a bit of a problem with the assumptions here. So if we were serious about modelling this, we might want to try something a little bit more complicated.